Energy efficiency in homes is an important issue as we look to address climate change and improve homes for people to live in. We want homes to be warm and we also want them to be healthy. And so as part of the Inherit project, we looked at past energy efficiency investments in the UK context. So this work is uh, really important because you're looking at a large proportion of European housing stock and households living in fuel poverty homes. So any kind of intervention is, um, has the potential to alleviate that burden on society and healthcare systems across uh, the world, world worldwide, essentially. Um, so we're interested in finding out uh, the links between the health and housing. Um, so how Inherit contributed in the case study around this area, we're interested in linking using the study uh, funded by the Eco Charitable Trust to actually understand what aspects of those findings had an impact on the environment, the health and health equity. Um, and that's where the Inherit study and uh, case study came from. We saw that improving energy efficiency improves health in some cases, which is what we would expect. For instance, installing energy efficient boilers improves cardiovascular disease and so reduces hospital admissions. In other cases, we found a different picture. In the case of loft installation, for instance, and draft proofing, we found that this increased hospital admissions. And why is that? Well, we think it's because we're sealing out the homes too much. And that means that the houses aren't properly ventilated, leading to issues of mold and potentially increasing indoor air pollution. And we found that um, areas with higher average energy efficiency had higher levels of hospital emissions for those three uh, diseases I mentioned earlier. Um, and this is indication of, or well, suggestive indication that um, sitting homes to prevent heat loss can have an impact on the indoor environment, such as indoor air quality, and actually increase the risk of a range of diseases. So in some of the work we're interested in is looking at um, how we deliver and improve those future policies and practices to, to avoid those potential consequences and maximising the potential benefits of uh, fuel poverty interventions. We compared the costs and the benefits of the different interventions. And overall, we found that the health impacts only marginally impacted on the findings. This suggests that energy efficiency investments are cost effective to make in terms of the environment and in terms of energy efficiency reductions. But in the case of health, one might need to be careful to avoid sealing homes in order to capture the full benefits and to ensure that you're tr delivering triple win solutions. Um, so we've previously looked at um, indoor dampness in social housing, uh, for example, and found that around about 40% um, of houses have had some form of mold growth within their homes. And we found that um, exposure um, had a, in those particular homes, an increased risk of asthma, as you expect in the adult population. This corresponds with uh, evidence around um, a, a meta-analysis that looked at the links between dampness and dampness-related agents and risk of asthma. And they found that, uh, as you expect, indoor dampness, indoor mould growth, uh, increased risk of asthma by about 70%. So we've, we've looked at um, those particular impacts around uh, fuel poverty and, and how that's associated with indoor dampness. Uh, we found that um, in, in those households that have uh, indoor damp and mould problems, they're likely to suffer from those poor indoor living conditions despite their use of ventilation, despite their uh, use of heating, and despite having their uh, high risk perception of potential health risks of that particular environment. Uh, so one of the areas that we're interested in looking at is potential solutions where we can overcome those risks. Um, and in another study we looked at in the same kind of uh, population 
group in social housing, uh, we found particularly adult, older adults uh, aged over uh, 50 had uh, a higher risk of asthma when they were exposed to indoor dampness. And this is like, likely to be something due to uh, the length of time people live indoors, for example. Um, so not only could uh, interventions around household energy efficiency improvements alleviate fuel poverty, but they can actually reduce um, indoor exposures such as uh, those associated with indoor dampness and poor um, living environments associated with biological allergens, so house dust mites, moulds, bacteria, for example, as well as uh, volatile organic compounds. So uh, you get microbial uh, box um, through the growth of mould within your home, but also in damp homes where building materials degrade, they also give off those volatile organic compounds. It's also uh, also poses uh, health risks for, for residents. Um, so linking all the studies together uh, is something that Herod's shown about uh, contributing to improvements in health, uh, reducing health equity in terms of addressing those lower income populations, and improvements in terms of the environment, so you live in indoor environment and outdoor environments through reducing the carbon footprint, um, addressing more sustainable household energy efficiency improvements and measures to adopt that address the built environments and human environments can actually deliver um, that kind of triple win. To improve energy efficiency in the future, what we really need to do is to think about whole house solutions to this problem. Thinking through how we can improve energy efficiency, ventilate our homes properly, and create warm and healthy homes for all in our society. Then we will really see triple wins coming out from cases such as these.